In 2024, several rules for flying in the European Euro have changed. In this video, I will explain all the steps needed to fly a drone in a EU country. This will apply to users living outside the EU, as well as local users who want to visit another European country. To keep things simpler, I will only consider models of DJI Prosumer line up to the Mavic 3 Pro for recreational use. The body responsible for drone regulation within the European Union is EASA, European Aviation Safety Agency. The same rules apply to every European country, plus Switzerland, Iceland, Norway and Liechtenstein. If you live in a country under EASA rules, you should register in the country of your residence and follow the procedure for insurance and permits if needed. You will then be able to fly your drone in any other European country. If you live outside the EU, you should register in the first European country you intend to use your drone and follow the procedure required. No further action is needed if you visit other EU countries. The procedure for the registration are not the same in the different countries. Some of them are very simple and user-friendly, like Luxembourg, Austria, Ireland, Netherlands, while others are a bit more cumbersome, like Italy. On the EASA website there is a very useful page listing all member countries with links to the respective aviation authorities, in most cases with an English version. I will post a link to this page in the description. The United Kingdom, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland is no longer under EASA rules, although the UK Aviation Authority regulations are very close to the European one. If you want to fly your drone in the UK, follow the link to the UK Civil Aviation Authority in the description. The different models of drones are organized in a system of category, subcategories and classes. It may look a bit complicated, but I will explain it in the easiest possible way. Classes are organized according to the weight. There are seven classes going from C0 to C6, but prosumer recreational drones fall into the first three. C0 is for lightweight models below the threshold of 250 grams, like the Mini 2 SC, Mini 3, Mini 3 Pro and Mini 4 Pro. C1 is between 250 and 900 grams, including the Air 3, Mavic 3 and Mavic 3 Classic. C2 is between 900 grams and 4 kilograms. The only model included here for our purposes is the Mavic 3 Pro, which is slightly heavier than the two other Mavic models due to the three lenses. Categories and subcategories are based on what the drone can and cannot do. There are three categories, open, specific and certified. Open is for leisure and for low risk commercial activities. It is the only one we are concerned here. The other two are for higher risk activities and are beyond the scope of this analysis. The open category is divided into three subcategories. In A1 it is possible to fly in any non-restricted environment, including urban ones. No minimal distance from building is required. Flying over uninvolved people is allowed, unless in case of assembly of people like concert, the audience of a sport event, weddings and so on. In subcategory A2 it is possible to fly in urban areas, even close to buildings, but with a minimum distance of 30 meters from uninvolved people. In subcategory A3 a minimum distance of 150 meters must be kept from building and uninvolved people. All drones sold from January 2024 must have the CE mark specifying the class. Drones sold before this date without a CE mark will be considered legacy models. All legacy models will operate under the subcategory A3 regardless of their weight. 
As an example, a Mini 4 Pro, which weighs below 250 grams, will be considered class 0 if it is marked. Otherwise, it will be in class 1 as a legacy model. The first thing to do is to register yourself as an operator. Then you must register the drone if the model has a camera, which is our case. The procedure for registration of the operator is generally very simple, simply adding your basic data. Refer to the IASA pledge listing with the individual nations authorities. For the registration of the drone, you will have to enter the model and the aircraft's serial number, which can be found on the About page of the settings in DJI Fly App. Drones with class identification labels C1 and C2 are equipped with a remote identification systems. The drone operator is required to upload onto the remote identification system the operator registration number. If your drone is below 20 kilograms, there is no specific requirement for insurance in EASA drone rules. However, most EASA member states mandate third-party liability insurance if you're operating a LiDAR drone. So, once again, consult the individual national authorities' websites. If your drone is already insured in your country, chances are that it will be covered when used abroad, but this must be checked on a case-by-case -case basis. Models below 250 grams do not require any online training or exam. The only requirement is reading the user's manual. For models of the class C1, like the DJI R3, Mavic 3 and Mavic 3 Classic, the certificate of competence A1, A3 is required. The steps needed are not the same in different AU countries. They are listed in the EASA link to the national authorities. In most cases, they consist of basic online training with a test with questions largely based on common sense. A few years ago, I passed the test with the Austrian authority and it took me about 15 minutes, 10 minutes of online training and another 5 minutes to reply to the easy questions. A certificate is then issued. I suggest printing it and carrying it in your bag. For models of the class C2, a more demanding exam is required to obtain the Remote Pilot Certificate of Competency for A2 Open subcategory. Several steps are involved. A proof of completion of online training for the A1, A3 subcategory, conducting and declaring practical self-training, passing an additional theoretical exam. The only DJI prosumer drone involved is the Mavic 3 Pro. If you're visiting for a non-EU country and plan to fly for recreational purposes, you may consider if you can bring a LiDAR model. Before taking off, you must check if flying in that specific area is allowed. The usual EASA page contains link to the official maps for most countries. Make sure to consult them before each flight. Restricted areas are generally in red. Here flying is not allowed, although in some cases it is possible to apply for authorization. Warning areas are in orange or yellow. Here the maximum flight height can be limited. It is also possible to consult DJI FlySafe maps, which work similarly. Several European countries have integrated their official maps into DJI geosystems, so that they are constantly kept up to date. There are a few other regulations to be aware of when flying in a European country. The maximum flight height is 120 meters for all classes and subcategories. The aircraft must always be kept under visual line of sight. When flying at night, the drone must have flashing green lights for recognition 
and a constant light to keep track of its position. When flying indoor, the only rule is to avoid flying over uninvolved people. First person view flight with goggles is only allowed with another person close by acting as a spotter to detect obstacles. Click on this link to watch my video about 9 tips for stunning drone photos. And don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.